Our guest today is Karl Burkhardt. Um, as I said, he's joining us from Chicago. Uh, I think it's around 8.30 in Chicago. Uh, so good morning. <laughs> um, Kyle is an HR expert. He's very, very passionate about employee experience as well as employer branding. So he also lived in Vienna and that's actually the, the connection uh, that we had. Uh, we have a mutual friend, Paulo Ferreira, um, who already had the webinar with us and uh, he connected us. We talked a little bit and uh, yeah, uh, there was no question about inviting him for, uh, for the webinar today. Uh, Kyle is a consultant to LinkedIn. He's going to talk about it, uh, what he does there. For me, it was overwhelming already when he explained me everything. So I think it's the best if he does it himself. Uh, the topic of his webinar today will be build your pers personal brand. And I think that's a very important topic, no matter which uh, age you are, it's always, always important you know, to, to build that and to, to build on it and, and to adapt it. And uh, you will always need that. So uh, Kyle, thank you for being with us. Have fun, the stage is yours. All right, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. I am going to, uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, I just want to say hello to everyone. Um, while I can't see you, oh. Sorry, let me go back to the start, poor intro. Well, I can't see everyone. Um, it's great to have you. Like uh, Marco said, it is 8.30 in the morning here. I have my coffee. So um, I want, uh, want you all to, uh, to get excited for this session here. Um, I hope you have either a notepad um, that you can write on or a digital notepad for the activity. Um, essentially, what I want to talk to is just a, a short intro on myself. I wanna highlight uh, all things that are important to your personal brand, really talk about what it means, what it can do for you, and just the importance of having a consistent message across all your external facing channels. Um, and then we'll dive into an activity I put together, um, and then we'll close with a bit of a Q&A. And then as Marco said, if you have any questions throughout, just add them to the Q&A, and we will address those at the end. So with that said, Welcome to Build Your Personal Brand. My name is Kyle Borkhart. Um, and I'm gonna just apologize that I have two monitors going here where I'm, I'm kind of tracking things and we'll be, we'll be making some notes here. But I always like to start with introductions and just wanted to say, you know, it's great to be here. Um, I think with my experience, it's a bit different than most folks to get to where I am today. Uh, I've never really taken the traditional route. Um, and I really credit the, the personal brand that I've built to get to me, get to me where I am today um, and really to have the opportunities that I've had. Um, as Marco said, I work for LinkedIn. Um, I am a talent insights consultant and essentially my role is to work with their data platform called Talent Insights and have a very strategic role that I advise customers on to really help curate this end-to-end -end employee experience. Um, and really that's where my passion lies. It's about individualizing and personalizing everything from your first touch point with a company to the onboarding, to your growth and development, to your last days and even being an alumni of an organization. And I think the more companies can build a program like that, the more attractive they will be and the stronger employer brand they will have. And so I think having you know, organizations out there who are being mindful of that, and obviously you know, knowing today's world with technology, social media, and you know, just your ability to really be um, you know, an influencer or be someone that has, you know, I would say, a reputation um, around different topics, um, being thought leaders. I think that just the power of your brand can really get you new opportunities that will take you places that you wanna to get to. So this session will really be all about building that personal brand. Um, I will make a little note that you know, by the end of this, we're not gonna have a fully flushed out profile. My whole goal is to really get you thinking about the importance of your brand, get you thinking about ways that you can think about crafting your elevator pitch. That's gonna be part of the activity today. Um, and then more broadly, how you think about, you know, your career path, the vision you have for yourself and the story that you wanna tell. So I always wanna start out with, you know, what is your personal brand? Um, and really to begin, I would say it is, uh, you know, a defined and uh, I would say a strategic map of who you want to be, what you want to stand for, and how you want to be perceived. And as you see on the screen, or not perceived. 
And so I think, you know, if you think about first impressions, you think about, you know, how people form opinions and people have their own, you know, formed hypotheses and perceptions of others. I think that, you know, today more than ever, it is so important to really think about, you know, who you are, what you stand for again, and again, that story that you want to tell. Um, you know, a brand is something that you're constantly building. And I think, you know, if you think about, you know, the ongoing story, the ongoing narrative, and, you know, how your career will evolve, that story will evolve as well. And so I think the main thing I want to share today is that no matter what, your story will evolve, people will have their perceptions, people will have their opinions. And it's really up to you if you want to take control and craft your own story and craft your own narrative. So thinking about a story, thinking about your personal brand, if you're not telling a story, I would argue that you've already lost half your audience. And so thinking about, you know, I would say in business and you think about, you know, a company, you know, figuring out who their ideal customer profile is, thinking about that target audience, that niche market, it really helps, you know, brands and companies narrow down to a list of potential customers, or in this case for your personal brand, potential employers. And if you aren't specific about the kind of work that you want to do or that you like to do, or really the skills and strengths that you can bring to the table and things that you can say, this is how I stand out. Um, you know, again, you won't have the same opportunities that someone else might have if they are really focused on building, you know, a strong external message. Now, I want to call out my last point here that no one wants to hear you shout or brag about your brand. That said, today more than ever, thought leadership is getting people to places they've never been. It's getting companies in, in, in places and with sales and new customers that they wouldn't have expected. And it's really telling, I think, with how people are looking for others to get sound advice, to get strategic advice. They don't want to hear you brag about you know, things that you've accomplished, but they do want to hear your insights. They do want to hear how you can help them in ways you've done things before. So as you think about you know, your overall personal brand, you know, and I'll talk through this, but it really is going to be you know, obviously how you can help others, what you can give to others, and that will really form how people view you and really see how you can add value, I would say, to the overall market and really that niche market that you want to focus on. Now, a strong personal brand isn't just something that you'll have on your, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, LinkedIn, you know, um, Car Area T uh, site. It's really going to be something that <clears throat> you want to have consistent across all of those areas so you can think about, okay, this is what I'm going to do in terms of bringing value to an organization. This is what I stand for. This is what I'm passionate about. This is where I have a sense of purpose. This is what drives me. And all of these things, if you think about them more, aren't going to just benefit an organization. They're really going to benefit you. And I would say the authenticity and the genuineness of how you want to go about building your career and living your life. And I think you'll all agree that now more than ever with technology and given all things COVID, working from home, I mean, I'm in my pajamas basically right now, um, you know, working from home is just going to be the norm. And the more that you can, I would say, um, intertwine your personal and professional life, um, the, the better off you're going to be and the healthier and happier you're going to be because you're going to be able to get the jobs that are best for you. You're going to hopefully get the right promotions that you want. And again, you're going to start positioning yourself as, you know, this thought leader or this individual that in organizations, you know, and anyone wants to come to for help, support, advice. Um, and again, it's just a, a, a mindful activity to think about because it's going to give you opportunities that you wouldn't have had before. Now, in summary, what I want to just call out here is that, you know, your personal brand isn't just, again, a marketing statement or some high level pitch that isn't true. It really is something that you need to put thought into, that you need to put effort into, and that really needs to be a strong representation of who you are in an authentic way. And I think for me in my early part of my career, I really struggled with where I saw myself going. I always saw myself as an entrepreneur. I was always passionate about, passionate about people. I majored in psychology and marketing, but I didn't really understand, I would say, where I could really fit in into the global labor market. And so I took jobs out of school that were in sales. I started working for a startup in San Francisco, doing a lot of different things, going to market with a new product. Um, I've worn hats in learning and development. 
Um, as Marco alluded to, I was the head of people for a tech company based in Vienna. Um, I've done a lot of employee experience consulting, and now I'm working for LinkedIn as a talent insights consultant. And my main goal and my main purpose, if I think about kind of my elevator pitch, it's really to help organizations build a personalized and holistic employee experience. And when I say that, it can sound very high level, but if you think about the employee life cycle from that sourcing, recruiting, the hiring, interviewing, the onboarding, time to development, uh, the, the development ongoing and your engagement with the company to your last days and beyond, if you break down those phases and stages into, into different, you know, I would say, um, well, stages, and really have a personalized approach and programs in place for each of those, you're going to be able to really engage people. And so today, what I want to focus on is how you can really build out your personal brand, how you can really represent yourself so you can position yourself to potential organizations, companies, and opportunities that are going to be best aligned for you and things that you're going to be able to take on that you're passionate about. So what I wanted to do today is really think about, you know, what is that high level overview, that elevator pitch? What is that narrative that you really want to focus on telling other people? And again, I talk about building a personal brand around, not give, around giving, not taking. And just what that means is, again, it's more about what you can do to support kind of the mission that you're on and the, the career path that you have in terms of thought leadership, in terms of engaging with community, in terms of networking. There's a whole host of things that you can do, but it starts with having that strong you know, presence online and being able to intertwine that online and offline. So what I wanted to really focus on and what I asked all you to do to bring is I want to just go through an exercise and I'm not going to give too much context about this because the, the real, I think, meat and the real value comes from your initial reactions and initial statements. So this is something you're just going to do behind the scenes on your computer. You don't have to share this with anyone. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions at the very end. And, you know, even beyond this webinar, um, I can share my information and you can reach out to me and ask any questions as you fine tune um, what your version 1.0 looks like. Excuse me. So uh, what I want to do today, again, is just build your personal brand pitch 1.0. And what I have for you is a few questions. And essentially what we're going to get to at the end is one, two, three sentences that are going to be your starting point of building your elevator pitch. And your elevator pitch, I kind of look at the ABCs here, should be authentic, it should be brief, it should capture the attention of others, and it should connect you to your target. And that's gonna what you're, that's what you're gonna be thinking about at the very end. So brevity, concise, passionate, purposeful, and thinking about you know, a true niche audience and target that you're gonna be sending this message to the best position yourself. So if everyone is ready, I am going to put these questions up here. I'm going to set my timer for about three, four minutes. Literally, I want you to spend 10 to 20 seconds on each question and just write down the first things that come to mind. What drives you? What drives you professionally? What are you passionate about? What makes you different, special, unique, or really stand out against the, the broader uh, population? What are your top three strengths?
What are your top three weaknesses? And what five words, and these are just single words, would you say are your core values? Now, I want you to look at the list that you just wrote down. I have a few more questions on the next slide, but I want you to look at that list and look at the words that you used and underline any duplicative words, any trends, any themes. Think about everything that you just wrote down there. And if you had to put a sentence together, what are some of the, the main words that you would want to use? And you don't have to build a sentence, but I just want you to kind of either highlight, underline, bold, um, kind of call out some key words that are used in these questions. All right, I hope everyone has had a few minutes here now to have some words, some keywords written down. Um, and uh, if not, we can get back to that. Now, I want you to look at these questions and not necessarily just using verbatim from what you already have written down, but now start thinking about what is my mission statement? And my mission statement isn't something that has to be, you know, a formal sentence. It can just be something that you really want to stand for. I mean, my whole statement in life, to be perfectly honest, is I want to help other people be successful and happy personally and professionally. And that just gives me joy. That's what brings me true, true happiness in my life. It's helping other people, it's seeing other people excel. And it's knowing that, you know, I can help make an impact on other people. What quote defines me? This is something that I would say is something that you might, you know, not have, you know, presently defined right now on the spot. What's really random and really interesting is I've gone through so many different exercises. I've read so many motivational quotes, so many different, you know, statements, been to different, you know, conferences, heard people speak. But I think the two quotes that really define me, one was said by my dad, and it's the most cheesy, corny thing I've ever heard, but it's so true. And that is work first, get it done, play last, it'll be more fun. And that has really embodied the mentality I carry with me for my work ethic. And it's really helped me stand out against a lot of my peers and colleagues throughout the course of my career to date. The other one is by Patty McCord, who is the former CHRO of Netflix and basically crafted and built their culture from the ground up. And her statement was, and I saw her speak at a conference and it was, it's crazy that when you treat people like adults, they act like adults. It's crazy shit, I know. And that just speaks volumes to me about how people are humans and they should be treated like humans. And the more that we can think about people as humans in the workplace, inside and outside of, um, I think the better off organizations will be. And so those are my two main quotes that define me. And then how I currently position myself to my peers and colleagues is, you know, again, going back to that employee experience, you know, statement, going back to, you know, what I showed in the beginning is HR tech, employer branding, employee experience, internal communication. You know, it's making sure that an organization can be well equipped with the right technology, with the right internal communication, and the right programs and people strategies in place to really foster a holistic employee experience. And then who is my niche audience? 
my niche audience is really any sort of thought leader, C-suite, HR leader, anyone really in an organization <clears throat> that I would say is passionate about creating an engaging and I would say productive workforce. And then what I can offer my audience is really those things that I've outlined in that first statement you saw, which is, you know, experience with them, helping them scale smartly, helping them build out an employee experience program, helping them attract the best talent possible, build a great candidate experience, turn that into a great employee experience, and really build strong brand advocates for that organization once they leave the organization. So now that you have uh, hopefully gone through each of these questions, Again, I know that this is, you know, not really the ideal time frame to build out a true, uh, you know, elevator pitch or have it finely tuned. But I wanted to just really get you thinking about some questions to uncover some key words and some key thoughts that are important to you and genuinely important to you, not just what you think others should think about you, but truly what's important to you. And so I think, you know, like again, authenticity, genuineness, and I would say, you know, being humble is really the keys to building a strong personal brand. So if I summarize the outcome of my elevator pitch, you know, this is what I have everywhere. Yeah. You know, a globally experienced leader with proven success scaling startups and early growth companies, dynamic background, spanning roles and people, employee experience, learning and development, sales and customer success, entrepreneurial, data and results driven, passionate about the future of work, and empowering employees and customers to exceed goals and expectations, both personally and professionally. And then if you go into my further you know, uh, profile, you'll see my career track, all the different accomplishments I've had, but this really summarizes you know, what I've done, what I do, what I'm passionate about, and what I can bring to the table, and what I'm gonna do for you as an organization. So that's really where I want you to get to. And like I said, I'm, I'm here to help you. I hope that you know, today was a very, you know, insightful um, session. I, you know, I have a, a much longer deck and session that I usually go through. Um, but I think, you know, you all have some sort of social media account. You all know that everything you post is going to be out there. It's out there forever. And so being mindful of, you know, what's available to potential, you know, I would say organizations, what's available to people just going into your account. Um, you know, all those things could potentially come back to hurt you or haunt you one day. So, I think it's always you know, important to think about making your accounts private um, and then anything that you are sharing should be going back to what is my personal brand, what is my story, and how should I you know, have others view me and talk about me. So with that said, I'm going to stop and open the floor to any questions or, or funny jokes. You know, that's, we can also go there too. Um, so Marco, I'll turn it to you. Are there any questions? Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing. Uh, I think that was very, very cool. Very quickly though, but still very cool. I was trying to, to answer all, the, all your questions uh, while you were yeah. talking. Um, it was very interesting. Uh, and I think this was also officially the first webinar held in pyjamas. So. <laughs> I, I really like that. So um, one question from, from my side was, was simply, you know, what was the moment you realized uh, you realized that you need to uh, you need to work on your personal brand. What, what was the moment where you said, "Hey"? Yeah, I think the moment for me was when I was applying for a job about four years out of university. I had worked for um, a sales company, just doing an inside-outside sales job that was really just focused on me making money to pay off student loans. And it really just was a way to get into the business world and learn more about broader business. And then it really was this turning point of, I want to do something that is not just sitting behind the desk and calling people. I want to you know, have an impact on organizations. I see how different work environments can really impact one's health and happiness. And I really started reading you know, more about what I would say is, you know, a company is having a strong culture. And when I started applying to these best places to work, no one was giving me the time of day. I wouldn't get, I couldn't get an interview. I couldn't get anyone's attention. Um, and you know, I felt like I had the, the personality, the work ethic and the drive to do it, but I wasn't able to present myself or give the first impression that I was an eligible candidate. And so those, I would say not even rejections, but yeah, just, you know, no one even giving me their time really, you know, I guess highlighted the importance of 
how you can use, you know, digital media, um, you know, LinkedIn and your social channels to really, I would say, position yourself to be attractive on first impression, which then I think uncovers a lot of different, uh, you know, opportunities for you to, you know, show who you really are. And I got the best compliment once from a recruiter saying, you know, you're a diamond in the rough. You know, you, and that's, that was in my early days. And, you know, I talked to her more and she just said, you know, when I went through your profile, you know, it didn't highlight anything that you just talked about. So I think that even starting with something, you know, 1.0 level, um, you know, you don't have to be, you know, a C-suite anything or a VP that it's just, again, telling that authentic story about what drives you, what your strengths are, and really, you know, I think where you can add value to organizations and to communities and just individuals in general. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We're currently, uh, we have our registrations open for our Be a Pirate Challenge and then students, pirates from all over the world are joining uh, the challenge. And on, there's a wall basically where, where they can uh, boast about themselves looking for team members. It's really impressive the way they present themselves and the way they, uh, I don't know, um, state their achievements and everything. It's it's. I think they're they're on, on, on a very good way, um, and yeah, so really really cool to to see that. Also, uh, for those who you know, we, we were constantly saying you know take your life in your own hands and and and, and maybe start uh, start your own thing and um, thinking about the personal brand may, might be seen as something that you um, might need more on the employee side. But uh, at the same time, my experience was uh, when I was looking for an apartment here in Vienna, usually it's very hard to get one. But we simply sat down with, with my girlfriend back then and uh, wrote down a few things about us, how to present ourselves in a nice way, put the picture there, send it out. And in the end, we got basically everything that we wanted. Uh, the, the, the landlords also chose us as, uh, as their um as their tenants so that was a, uh, a really cool experience so if, you, if you actually think about it and if you work on it it actually works um there are a couple of questions so yep, I think, uh, caro asked a question so two things one thing for sure to clear up we are here for everybody and i think you know me being in my pajamas me having my hair down and uh hopefully just you know me talking about this story where there always is going to be a starting point that yeah, we are here for everybody and that literally you are here as someone that can learn hopefully a great deal to, you know, put you on a path to, again, whatever you deem as, you know, a successful track. I don't think I'm a high flyer by any means. I, you know, I'm a very family oriented person. I love helping other people. And again, I'm just a passionate person that, you know, thought about where I wanted to go and how I wanted to help people. And mm -hmm. it's gotten me opportunities that, you know, excite me. So I think that's the main, you know, thing here to think about too, is it's not about getting, you know, a title or a paycheck at a certain level. It's about what makes you happy, what makes you feel like you can make an impact. Where is your sense of purpose going to come from? And those are the things that truly will make the big difference. I mean, you can have a great job that pays well, but after a year, two years, you're gonna get burnt out. And if you're not excited about it or passionate about it, it won't matter. So having that strong brand and that narrative, you know, to get opportunities, like I said, that are purposeful are gonna help you, anyone and everyone. And then at, seeing your question about how professional HR experts are really looking at candidates and applicants before inviting them and what are they looking for? And what's interesting is I think so many organizations now are turning into different machine learning tools, different AI tools, and it's just, you know, it's about having the keywords, the right messages, the right things that you want to highlight. And so I think, you know, your, your personal brand now, it's not only just ways to give, you know, insight into what you can do, it's actually your qualifier to even get in the door with interviews now, because it's it's basically HR people using software to scan your profile and uncover any sort of skills that or experience that you might have. And they're looking for, again, a lot of different, you know, algorithms going into not only just keywords, but inferring different skills or experience you do have. And so that's where having a consistent narrative and really thinking about what is the opportunity or the job you want to have and kind of reverse engineering that that's where you're going to start uncovering more, I would say, you know, calls from recruiters and companies saying, hey, let's let's schedule a first round interview. And so I think if you can have truly, you know, 
you know, a high level one sentence overview, a paragraph that's kind of the summary, and then just thinking about ways that you could either create, you know, some sort of thought leadership about, you know, uh, an area of, of work that you want to go into and just kind of highlighting what's going on in the market. You know, there are cool ways that I've seen a lot of people get jobs nowadays as entry level folks where, you know, you don't have to have, you know, three, four, five years of experience. You don't have to be a founder or someone that's super entrepreneurial. You know, you can just be you know, honest and say, you know, I'm a recent graduate. I have this degree. And, you know, you can highlight things that, hey, I've created this short little one pager about, you know, emerging technology in Europe as it relates to internal communications. So thinking about, again, this whole story and whole narrative, the more you can add value to others, the more you're going to be seen as a thought leader and an expert. And again, it starts with where do you see yourself going and being genuine to that and being authentic to that vision. So the underlying theme should just be, you know, you know, think about what's going to make you the happiest and really, you know, follow a path that's going to keep you on track. Your story will evolve. Your career will evolve. You'll have some good opportunities. You'll have some bad opportunities. You'll have some amazing experience. You'll have some bad experiences and you'll learn. And that's the most important thing. You, you can't just go right from college graduate to CEO. And so many people nowadays, you know, especially with social media, see the instant gratification, the, I mean, the crazy, you know, not the not reality of people where it's just like, oh, look at that post. I can be perfect and an expert in one day. That's not reality. So think about your long term journey and, you know, the evolving story you have. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the no goes, the don'ts, if you, if you see any applications or applications or CVs? Yeah. So for sure, obviously, if you have, you know, a picture of you, you know, chugging a, a beer at the pub, that's probably not a good start, you know, you know, things like that, you know, certainly give a, a clear picture, a good representation of who you are. Again, that high level statement, do not, do not, do not brag about yourself. So do not have it be all about, you know, accomplishments. That's the, that's the first thing, you know, you can highlight your experiences and talk about successes in a way that isn't boastful. Eliminate any and all kind of fluffer, you know, builder words uh, like very or really or a lot, you know, those are unnecessary filler words that just actually hurt you more than anything. And so think about having a very crisp and concise, you know, statements um, without, you know, any of those added value words that really, you know, are actually going to be you know, hurting kind of the language because it's just overemphasizing things that, you know, don't need to be. Mm -hmm. So um, those for sure. And then, you know, as, for, as far as other no goes, um, I mean, having zero presence, I think, you know, I think the, the basic, you know, foundation starting point should be, you know, profile um, with a picture with an overview, uh, with a quick summary. Um, and, you know, even, you know, that is good enough as someone who's just out of university. Um, ideally you'd have some, you know, skills listed, you'd have some, you know, again, content that maybe you created or things that, you know, articles that, you know, spike your interest that you're sharing. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be sitting down and creating some, you know, thoughtful piece of content. You can even just be taking things you're reading and sharing if they're relevant. And just, again, it's, it's supporting, it's advising, it's sharing, it's giving advice, um, again, about this audience that you're trying to, trying to create. So. I think when you're building out your profile, think about just, you know, having something that if you showed to a peer, a friend, a parent, a teacher, a potential employer, that everyone would come away with that person is doing this. They're excited about that. And this is the value they can bring. And they would all have the same consistent message at the end of reading whatever you are crafting. Um, I mean, it's, it really comes down to more, you know, it's up to you on what you think, you know, you should or shouldn't include, but those two no-goes are the main things. It's just, you know, keeping things professional and eliminating using, you know, boastful bragging and I would say fluffy wording. Mm -hmm. So I have to admit that, now that I'm uh, probably a very bad uh, person when it comes to employing people because I never read the CV, for example. Uh, for me, it's just, I, I get it. I look at it, maybe I, I look at two, three things, but uh, if it's not somehow uh, appealing or interesting, I don't really even care about it. So do you, do you think that's also something maybe more and more important uh, that young people should, I don't know, 
take care of or look at uh, when they apply somewhere. Yeah. They, you know, the, 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 the way it's built up, the structure, the design and, uh, of the documents. I think in terms of where I would give advice in terms of what you can be doing proactively right now, it would be, you know, again, having that basic profile. Um, that's why that one sentence overview is going to be so powerful because more times than not, an, a recruiter isn't going to look much more beyond 10, 15 seconds at your profile. And that's true. They, they, I, most of the recruiters tell me I maybe get to the second sentence, maybe. And so that should give you enough of an insight in terms of how much they're not reading. Um, thinking about, you know, the new technology that's out there, I would highly recommend creating a 30 to 60 second short video of yourself that you post to that profile. And it's truly being your authentic, genuine self, you know, kind of being excited, talking about you know, your strengths and some experiences and just, you know, the value that you're going to bring and the work you're going to do for your next job. And having that on there, that is something that people will watch and they'll see, and that will, you know, help you stand out, especially right now. I think we'll see that being more commonplace in a year or two from now. Um, but think about that right now, especially because that's the sort of content that can, you know, get you beyond kind of that initial qualifying stage, get you beyond even, you know, okay, should we invite them to an interview or not? If they're going to like see that and they're going to say, this person, you know, I can tell culturally aligns, they have the right mentality, they seem ambitious, um, and they seem excited for their next role or their, their first role. So those are, those, those, are, those are probably the big things I would focus on for you guys um, in terms of what you can be doing proactively. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm not, not, not that bad, I'm just average, right? Nobody yeah. does that. <laughs> I mean, that's where uh, you know machine learning and AI is going to really come into play here because I think the recruiting field is going to get a, a facelift. Um, you know, all of HR is really getting a facelift where they're now getting a seat at the table, being more, far more strategic. And I think as we in HR look at the kind of the global labor market, even thinking about how COVID has impacted it, um, you know, it's just it's so it's so competitive, and so. Um, you know, it's competitive for individuals too. And that's where, you know, all things employer brand and personal brand um, are really X factors for companies and individuals. Mm -hmm. And how much do you think that, um, you know, I mean, now with our target group, uh, with our students, they're mostly on, on Instagram. How much do you think is, is, is it also important to take care of that, of those accounts, let's say more private accounts, more, more, more social, uh, accounts that you use just for fun? Uh, what, what, what is the, the influence there? Do, do, do recruiters check those accounts? Yes, 100%. And, you know, I had maybe one sentence in my little expedited talk track, but I usually spend more uh, more time on social media in terms of like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Snap. Um, recruiters will try and find anything on you, especially, you know, once you're in the process. Um, I would say initially, you know, if you're just going for a first round interview, they might not be looking at that Instagram, Facebook account yet. Excuse me. Um, but that is something where I advise people to either make it private, if it's something that you just don't want people to be seeing, friends, family, you know, maybe pictures that are at music festivals, you know, things like that, that, you know, you might be mindful of. Um, all of my accounts are private, not because it's, you know, inappropriate or me partying, but it's just more, you know, I, I'm not showcasing my profile, you know, to the world. Um, that said, you can also use it in, in very active ways to further enforce, you know, your LinkedIn and your other professional channels. Um, and I've seen a lot of people doing great things there where they're, again, maybe sharing, you know, a picture or sharing an article or, you know, just highlighting other stories you know, people are building, you know, even professional Instagram, you know, accounts as well. So th just thinking about, again, your audience and what you want to present to the external world is, you know, it's really up to you. And so utilizing, you know, other channels will only help you if you're doing it the right way. So staying consistent across any channel and all channels will be helpful. Uh, but it's up to you on who you're allowing access to. Um, ultimately, I would just say, you know, I don't advise anyone to just have their accounts just randomly open in public. I just don't think that that's a best practice nowadays with cybersecurity and hacking and all those things. You're just inviting people to learn more about you. Maybe one last question since there are no other questions coming in. Um, 
you know, we were talking now about how you present yourself online and uh, maybe when you apply for a job. But uh, what about uh, when you have, let's say, an interview or when you meet people? You know, uh, you also said you lived in San Francisco. In San Francisco, it's all about your, your, your tagline, how you present yourself in, in, in like the first sentence. And people, after that sentence, people decide if they want to keep talking to you or not. Um, what is your experience with that? What would you recommend there? I mean, it's that, that you just the nail on the head. I mean, that's the, that's the city that really brings that to light more than anywhere else that I've really experienced. It's not really about who you are or anything. It's what you can do for me. So mm -hmm. having a statement where you can really say, you know, this is what I do. This is the value I bring. And, you know, I think people will be far more attentive uh, in terms of, you know, giving you the opportunity to, to connect, engage. And that's almost like a, an unfortunate thing because it's almost like I have to somehow qualify to, to talk to people, but it's not really that it's just more people are so busy, I think, and people, you know, have so many opportunities to connect with so many different people. You really need to be able to articulate yourself. And, you know, I would say, do, does it make sense for us to engage and connect and keep, keep going talking, whatever it, the opportunity or situation may be or not. Um, so my, my experience has been the more that you can be, you know, concise with your words, the more that you can be genuine with who you are, um, you know, opportunities will come your way. And don't be discouraged by people who, you know, aren't giving you a job or who aren't engaging. You know, that's where I bring up that niche audience. You know, there's billions and billions of people on this planet and uh, we're all different. Um, I will say we all live here, so hopefully everyone's good to each other. But, you know, in terms of, you know, the opportunities that will come your way, don't be discouraged by failures, by things that you think are failures. Um, you know, it's really just about staying positive and thinking about what's next. And that's where your brand and your storyline, again, will come back into play. It's, it's, this it's this ongoing evolution, this ongoing journey. And again, don't think about 10, 15 years from now and, you know, where you're at right now. Think about tomorrow and how you can get to tomorrow and where you see yourself in 10, 15 years. But don't get discouraged with, you know, not being there right now. Fantastic. Perfect. I like that. Um, hey, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing. It was very interesting uh, listening to your uh, to, uh, uh, thoughts and to your insights. And uh, thank you for getting up this early and, you know, <laughs> doing this morning session. It was, it was helpful. Uh, and I definitely will share the deck that I talked through today, which, you know, has those questions and has some more examples in it. Um, and then I'll also include, you know, my LinkedIn profile where you can connect and we can chat. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Take care and see you soon. Take care, everyone.